Reverend Crystal Cox, Universal Church of Light. We are continuing to discuss various comments on the Center Valley Animal Rescue Facebook page regarding the Michael Allman criminal case and civil case and the dog Moses, of which I allege they stole from him pre, that, and that they premeditated this theft and they used the, the abuse of the courts fraud on the court's process, I allege, to steal this man's personal property and cause him mental anguish. Okay, so the, where we're at now is the Port Townsend Leader article, which I posted many places, and I, you'll see a, a huge chronology of all this at some point. That was posted on michaelandmoses.blogspot.com as well. Well, this is where Center Valley Animal Rescue posted it and some of the comments of their constituents. Okay, so the name of the article with the Port Townsend leader, the local newspaper, was Did the County Policy Fail This Dog? The story of a wolf hybrid dog found nearly dead after he was apparently dragged. Okay, so that to me also I allege is criminal defamation. Because um, even if you say apparently, they're inciting a riot. So you combine the local paper an established nonprofit, and then you add that to the police and the other people, the county attorney, the people they got involved later. And it looks like they're telling the truth and this one homeless man's just lying or he's just an abuser. But I'm hoping that you'll see how this works and how this can happen to people as it happens all the time. It just so happens that there's a clear picture painted here and I know this stuff and I enjoy helping people to have a will to live. Let's just say that for now. So here we go. And I, I'll i read you the article later. I've posted it many times. This is the comments on the Center Valley Animal Rescue page regarding it. So let's just go up here again. Center Valley Animal Rescue. We've already talked about this one. And um, okay. So you can starve an animal because you're low income or homeless. He wasn't starved. He's a wolf hybrid. Okay. I witnessed Michael feeding him every day and every night. So did a lot of other people on here. You don't know that he was starved. That's hearsay. Okay. And yes, homeless people are allowed to have animals and dogs forage. There's a lot of different ways that homeless dogs eat. Okay. Um, these people in their privileged houses making their judgments don't seem to have a clue of what it's really like. Okay, the laws really need to change to protect the animals that can't fend for themselves. Okay, yeah, animals can actually fend for themselves more than homeless people. Animals can get under tarps. They can chase things and kill things. They can rummage through the garbage. They can eat things that are half dead. Animals can do a lot of things to survive that humans can't. You same people ignore the humans that live in the tents and they freeze to death. Okay. Where is your compassion for the sentient being, the living being of the human man or the human woman? Okay. You think, oh, the homeless can fend for themselves. So it's okay. Actually, I allege that dogs can fend for themselves better than humans. Okay. Okay. Has the sheriff done any follow-up visits to confirm the dog is getting continued treatment and is still alive? Okay, how cruel, right? Is he even still alive? Do they even care? And why is it the sheriff's job to go and poke around this man's business? Because he's homeless? It's not. Okay? You wouldn't act this way for people who lived in houses. Oh, go check on him and see if he's still okay. Well, you've assumed he's done something bad. Okay. Okay. The article said nothing about homeless or low-income pet owners. Um, right, it did. It talked about the law and stuff. So, okay. The law doesn't protect animals the same way it does people. So maddening. Animals are more innocent than people. Most people have a choice. Animals don't. This poor dog. Here's the thing. You assume people have a choice. Okay? You assume that animals are what that you can rescue them and their life will be better? This poor dog. No, none of these people, um, I allege, they're heartless and cold. Um, 
it's like a serious abusive relationship where the domestic abuser is hundreds and hundreds of people in the community and the victim is Michael Allman, right? They gang up on him, they gaslight him, they erase his side of the story. And the Port Townsend community page did the same thing. And they all did it together, conspiring against this one man. Okay? No, animals are not more innocent than people. Okay? Try to have value for the equal rights of the human involved here. Now, Tabitha Madison Carmen, this guy deserves much worse done to him. Now, the Center Valley Animal Rescue page will leave up every violent threat to Michael, including to drag him and kill him. But they removed his side of the story. Okay, they removed him telling what really happened because that didn't fit into their narrative. I don't get it. As I keep saying, monsters among us, folks. So, unproven Simply some animal rescue said the guy did it, they vilify him, and they set off on a 29-month campaign to steal his dog and nearly drive him to suicide. Okay? It's not okay. These comments, that guy deserves much worse done to him, it's not okay that they're left here inciting violence against this man. Is it legal? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so Destiny Crow says, Moses is healed now. Destiny Crow, as much as he will ever be, right? We got the, the <laughs> wounds like that will always be with him to one degree or another. Yes, and guess what? Those wounds will also always be with the man who loved and loves Moses and watched his animal get hurt and couldn't be there to comfort him or love him because you folks stole his dog, I allege, through fraud on the courts and abusive process. Flat out premeditated theft and deliberate mental anguish to torture and torment and punish an innocent man who you deemed guilty and the courts deemed innocent. Vigilante justice is what we're showing you here, folks. And they got it wrong. Okay. Yes, I know, but the owner's taking care of him. The owner was supposed, Jenny Jane says, the owner was supposedly taking care of him, obviously condescending, before the incident too. So that's not reassuring. How asinine, right? You have an accident, your dog gets out of the vehicle or runs out on the street. You know, I see it all the time. See dogs run out in the highway, see different things happen. And that's not reassuring. You don't get to say, okay, you don't get to say. Okay, Destiny Crow, if you look back, owner did not have him. He was missing for days prior to the accident. Um, this had a weight problem. So, right, so he was in an accident. He was missing, okay? We don't know what really happened. He could have jumped out of the, ba the back, and then he got hit by a car. Some other accident happened, okay? We don't really know. We don't have a video of what really happened, okay? We just have a bunch of people in this lynch mob assuming what happened. Okay, um, yes, and that Moses was not eating the right food. He wasn't. People thought he was hungry and they was feeding him. A wolf hybrid just eating whatever people give him, he had allergies to. Okay? The owner has taken, Greg Cat says, the owner that was taking such good care of him before he was almost killed? Yeah, that's what happened. See, people own animals... And they get into accidents. Sorry, but that's not reassuring. Guess what? It's none of your business. You do not have a right to incite a riot and a lynch mob against this man based on you not being reassured. Wah, wah, wah. This is real people, real families. That dog was part of a real family, okay, for his entire life. Nothing to do with needing your reassurance. Competent and caring owners know where their pets are 24-7. What a load of bullshit. I see pets at large all the time. My pets have gone missing. Okay, I've, I'm from rural Montana. It happens all the time. And in Port Townsend, I lived in a car for many, many years. I've seen rogue animals all the time. You can be a responsible pet owner and not know where your dog is. Flat out malicious lie. Oh, so these things can't occur, period. Just lies. Okay, thank you for providing the info. Many people care and have not forgotten about Rody. Okay, so this guy, 
right? Now, Cinderella Animal Rescue is fine with them trying to attack Michael, fine with threats against Michael, okay? And fine with Michael's financial, his um, his personal medical records. They, they just, because he's homeless, he has no rights and doesn't matter. No civil rights, no human rights, no rights of process, no animal rights, nothing because he's homeless. Okay? So Robert Heck says... What about his addiction problem? Okay. Does he have an addiction problem? Is that part of this case? Do we know if that's true? Are these people that know him or know of him airing his medical conditions or his situations? Okay. If he, is, if he does have an addiction problem, is that any of these guys' businesses and is it relevant to him not loving his dog or abusing his dog? Well, I suppose, right? If someone's like heroin addict or whatever and, you know, kicking and beating. And, I mean, I suppose it could. But what an assumption, right? And Sivar thinks this is okay. His personal life is okay to be aired, whether true or not. And threats against his death is okay. But they deleted Michael's side from these posts. Okay, if it doesn't break your heart, then possibly you also are one of the monsters monsters among us. Okay, so this guy says, what? Or Kathy Osgard says to Destiny Crow, who seems to be defending Michael, what? Did you go to school? Your run-on sentences doesn't make sense. Assholes. These guys are evil, demonic, dark assholes, okay? What she said above, there was a little bit nonsensical. But to me, it was obviously done in talk text, okay? It was obviously an error of something on the computer. It was, there was no way I would have said that was a run-on sentence when um, it was clear that it was, uh, the typos that were there were done like electronically, for one. And for two, so now this woman's the grammar police, right? How evil are these people, right? So now what's the problem? Somebody that's sticking up for Michael that they're going to attack for grammar? These folks are the monsters among us, folks. I'm going to include this one in for sure. And possibly this guy. Obviously, this is irrelevant. But these kind of comments are just sick, right? This is life or death here. Okay, this is a big deal. And this is what they want to talk about. Grammar. What? Did you not go to school? I mean, they want to bully and make fun of people. And Cinderella Animal Rescue thinks this is fine to have on their page. All right. Okay. Okay. Laura Book. <clears throat> Paul Becker, the head of the JHS is responsible for taking this dog away from Sivar, where he was getting excellent care. All subjective, right? But it's their site, so I guess they can say that. Is this person a volunteer there? I mean, you know, right. Not really identifying who this person is. Okay, so excellent care that he needed, that they say he needed, and giving it back to his owner who had not taken properly care of him in the first place. Is that hearsay? It was an accident. This cannot happen in the future, right? And they're going to make dang sure as they all gang up to take the dog and, and, and nearly drive this man to death. Sivar and JHS board members, along with the JC sheriff, need to define proper protocol so that animals don't suffer because of human animosities. Okay. They also need to develop protocols so that humans don't suffer at these monsters, such as you see ganging up against this innocent man on the Cinderella Animal Rescue Facebook page. They're all proud of their trophy. Today is October 3rd, 2021. Last Friday, October 21st, 2021, they finally executed on what I call their fraud on the courts, their deliberate malicious intent to their own unjust enrichment stealing this man's property. They plotted for years to steal his property. Would it have been different if the property was a car? or jewelry, or gold, right? They plotted to steal his property. They used laws to put liens on property like you would a house or a vehicle. Then they took him to court, of which he didn't know how to defend himself, and they got a judgment against him, and they have a 
five or twenty-eight thousand dollar judgment against him and his dog, which they're going to sell to the highest bidder, which they planned this whole time. Again, the video that I'm making right now is from a thread from May of 2019. Okay, they plotted this all along to keep this man from his dog, which is his personal private property. And they use laws to put a lien on it for services. So in my opinion, they stole the dog. Okay, like if they kidnapped you and kept you at a spa for a year and then charged you for the spa. Okay, they stole the dog, I allege. They kept the dog hostage for nearly a year. And then they want this man to pay the vet and care fees. And you'll see all along as they talk about it in different hearings. Okay. And the whole issue between all these guys is that he was homeless, right? He was poor. He couldn't pay. Well, guess what? He was deemed guilty in the criminal case because he couldn't prove that he was poor, homeless, had no money. After all the trial, including Kennedy, the prosecuting attorney, all the attorneys involved, all the witnesses, all these threads, all along all this time, proof. He was homeless, he was indigent, he was poor, but yet he got a guilty plea because, why? Well, because he couldn't prove he was poor, because apparently his attorney didn't get the right paperwork in. Well, I allege that's baloney, and they did that so that Center Valley Animal Rescue could have a time period of a few months to get a declaratory judgment and have the judge rule that the that the lien against Michael then use that $28,000 lien to then auction off his personal private property which is the dog to pay for the lien okay because once the case is appealed he won't have any criminal charges because um, his attorneys already allegedly admitted that he just forgot to file something to prove that Michael was poor they all knew he was poor and it was already on the court record. All this to protect this vigilante mob. Nothing you can do about it, right? No. But I can show you how it works because it happens with many other things in society. And to protect the rights of homeless and to, and to try and get better laws for emotional support animals and try to get people to give a shit about the person as much as they do the dog. Okay, they, they'll go... These people, these people will see a man laying there half bleeding out and dying and they will rescue the animal and they won't fix the guy's teeth. They won't give him food. They won't take him and put him inside in a warm place or take him in by their warm fireplace. No, they hate the man. They hate the homeless, I allege. And they steal their property, their love, their warmth, their security, their family, their income potential. Michael had already bred Moses, $700 a puppy, seven of them. They took away his ability of future income. They took away his best friend and family in the winter, of which they never gave back. And they think they're righteous. They are not. Okay, it needs better protocols. Yeah, especially when someone is suspected of animal cruelty or neglect. It's backwards. He wasn't charged with animal abuse or neglect. In this case, check out Michael Allman's GoFundMe page. Okay, so they're making fun of that. People are not that stupid to donate to an animal abuser. This woman is vicious, right? You donate to help him, right? So he can get a vet. So he can get his, his dog back. So he can heal him and fix him up. But no, this vigilante court has him as an animal abuser. No remorse, no trial needed. They already, they already made the verdict that he's guilty, and they set out on a 29-month way to make the court see that, too, by setting him up, by letting his dog out, by Officer Wendy Davis, I allege, conspiring with them. Okay, you'll see at every turn in the road where they blocked this man. And Michael and I both admitted that, you know, we wouldn't necessarily have believed him either over all these people. So I want to show you guys how it works. Right, how all these wealthy people with nothing better to do, this vigilante mob, a Center Valley Animal Rescue, a nonprofit, okay, several, every one of the, uh, the four different prosecuting attorneys communications with, the city of Port Towns and their city attorney, the Humane Society, all of these people mob against this man, and you wouldn't believe it. But the evidence is overwhelming. Okay. So they're making fun of his GoFundMe page, 
again, that, like I said, this woman here is pretty vicious. When you think of monsters among us, think that's one of them. Okay, the article said nothing about, okay, so got that again. We already saw that. Um, right, they don't, <laughs> that dog, okay, Maureen, that dog should have never been returned to the owner. Evidently, he can't afford to take care of the dog and is stupid enough to have tied it to a vehicle and drag it down the road. Oh, yeah, that's me. I'm so dumb, man. Uh, uh, I tied my dog I love so much, and then I just drug him. <laughs> that's me. And that's why he's fought so hard to get him back, right? Because he did that. Okay? You don't get to say he should have never been returned. And then you say evidently he can't afford it? Yeah, a lot of people can't afford it. Okay? But you don't know if he was taking care of the dog or not. And then you call him stupid? Now, Center Valley Animal Rescue is okay with calling him stupid, threatening to kill Michael, threatening to drag Michael. But they remove his side of the story. You okay with that? All you listening to this? Is that okay? What does it take to prove a home? Oh, so have tied it to a vehicle, then drags it down the road. Okay, that's what these, that's the picture these people painted. And they used it to incite a mob of violence, stalking, threatening, and eventually they got the dog and they conspired, I allege, with Officer Wendy Davis and Cinderella Animal Rescue, who had premeditated intent to steal this dog and place a lien on it for their services, as you see over and over and over again. Now, I have said this in every place I can, but in order for the courts to see it clearly, all of this has to be spelled out clearly in chronology. And I intend to do that over months. It doesn't matter how long it takes. The story's not going to change. It's been years. We're going to just roll it all out here. Um, and then you'll see the chronology and how each part of this worked. And um, yeah, I'll continue. What does it take to prove a home and owner are unfit to care for an animal? And why is it that unfit's okay under the so-called law? I, I asked that about humans too. Do you care about the humans like that? Disgusting. This is a blank no-brainer. Okay. Monsters among us. Okay. I object to the posting of the photo of this poor dog. You would not post a picture of an injured child. Yeah. His private medical information the, the public did not need did not have a right to know about this dog it was the center valley animal rescue mob that worked up port townsend leader and worked the public up and incited even more of it. so not just their facebook thread but the entire community as they pretty much accused him and what i say is criminal defamation defamation i allege is the port townsend leader getting on this bandwagon and so then everybody hating him and vilifying and trying to find him and going through his trash and stalking him and oh my goodness right and who'd believe it because he this homeless man he's just crazy right gaslighting which is a perfect analogy of what happens in domestic violence cases oh you're lying that's not really happening to you right so they're saying a picture is worth a thousand words. Okay, so if you didn't see the picture, would you still feel that way? So they're basically admitting that, yeah, they incited the riot. Okay. And they said this, I, I, <laughs> this vicious woman, how else would people know the truth? So thankful for the article in the picture. Ooh. So if I see a picture of a guy beat up and half dead, is that proof that his uh, uh, friend – any certain person murdered him? A picture of an injured person or animal, or let's say damage on a car or damage on a house or building, that is proof of the truth? No, the picture shows that the animal got hurt. He was in an accident, okay? How else will people know the truth? Well, you could actually ask for the other side's version, maybe do some follow-up, some investigation, some homework yourself. Nah. Let's just steal this guy's dog. Let's set him up. Let's go for him. Let's try to drive him to suicide. It's mental anguish and torment him. And then let's use our court system, premeditated, I allege, to steal his property and ruin his life. That's what they did. Okay. People need to dig their heads out of the sand. This crap happens all the time. The only way to fix it is to make people see. Personally, all right, Deborah Westerland says, personally, I think Mr. Becker, 
is far more interested in forwarding his political aspirations than the welfare of animals. Maybe Mr. Becker was following protocol. We're going to do an examination of the Humane Society of all aspects, the Jefferson County Sheriff and who did what and um, and show you all that. But if they had to give the dog back, then they had to. It's these vigilantes that worked everybody up. OK, and they had so much political pressure from the community that the all the authorities just buckled to them. Right. Because they're more powerful than this one homeless man. And that doesn't make it OK. OK. Does anyone know? I don't know. He should work for the betterment of animals and stop attacking organizations like CVAR that genuinely care for animals. Sounds like in this scenario, Mr. Becker was actually following the law. They wanted vigilante justice. So they wanted him to break the law. OK. OK. Does anyone know the reason Paul Becker removed the dog from CVAR? Because it wasn't their dog. OK. Because it was against the law. And he should have never been taken there because there was another actually licensed animal hospital open. He should have never been to CVAR. I don't understand if that said he was in no shape to be moved. He needs to be held accountable. Who? Paul Becker, which sounds like in this case, actually, is one of the only parties that actually followed the law, which I allege Officer Wendy Davis did not and seems to have no accountability thus far. I will get all this in, a, in alignment someday, and I will file complaints with everybody everywhere, including, as we know that Adam P. Carp loves, a third party criminal complaint, which he advocates for, for vigilante justice for animal. I will be filing a third party, I'm the third party, criminal complaint against all of these and spelling out everything they did with lots of evidence. I don't know when, sometime within the next six months. Right now we're just gathering this all in more of a chronology order and I now have a place again for my church and so I'm able to spend time on this Whereas what happened before with my blog, I lost a bunch of my videos. Okay, so again, they're asking about addiction. They're airing his uh, personal issues and allegations. We don't know anything about that. We this is did he tie? Um, we don't go and ask everything about his personal life. We either he drugged the dog and he's abusing the dog, or he's not. And if he drugged that dog, that dog needs to be taken away from him. Okay. But if you think he drugged the dog, prove he drugged the dog and then take him away that way. Don't set him up for something else down the road, which is what I allege they did. Okay. Oh, my God. We, Stacey Martin says, oh, my God. Unbelievable. What do we need to help to do to help, Sarah? And they're angry. Okay. Masha McGinnis. Accidentally leashed to a moving vehicle. Okay. That must be a quote from the leader. They just made that up. From hearsay, okay? To whom is that quote attributed? Is that an official statement by law enforcement? Is there such a thing as accidentally leashing an animal to a moving vehicle? The article reads like it was written by the sheriff's department to cover their asses. Okay? Okay. Tawny Hutchinson. He should have stayed with CVAR. Also, aren't wolf dogs and even hi hybrid dogs illegal in Washington? You know, you could do a Google search before you start defaming people. He bought them in Washington. They're for sale all over. So, again, this is okay with CVAR to have all of this out here. Another reason to take this poor creature away from the careless owner abuser and put into a safe and loving hands. Because he's illegal when he's not? So you made up the reason it's not true, and then you added another reason. Okay? You can't... <laughs> you can just see, folks, how the vigilante justice um, just poured out here and how it led to inciting a riot and a mob against this man for 29 months, and then they succeeded to get this dog away from him. Okay. Um, like the judge said, the laws protect animals. We already read that one. Some of these are doubled up for some reason. Right. Didn't you go to school? Bullies, bullies, bullies. Michael Austin. Michael Allman is homeless. Yeah, some of us are. You got a problem with that? You think there's a difference between you and us because you live in a home? Y'all better than us? 
monsters among us. Where is Moses? Uh, I'm getting ready to cuss, people. Watch out. None of your fucking business. Okay, woman? None of your business. Boom. Inciting a riot, a mob against this man. Hold on a sec. I gotta adjust something. Okay. How else are we going to know the truth? Okay, then more about Paul Becker. Okay, so let's stop this one. Uh, people need to dig their head out of the sand. This crap happens all the time. Okay, a lot of the, some of these are um, repeated. Okay, so again, if you want, to, I'll, I might load this one on my YouTube channel as well. So my, my Rumble channel is Michael Allmain Case. And so you can search for Michael Allmain Case Rumble, or uh, the title of it is Michael Allmain Fights for His Dog, Moses. I don't want my videos to be removed from YouTube, so I'm going to put them all on Rumble as we do lots more. There's video transcripts, um, the trial hearings, and I do comment I'm going to do commentary on all of it to show you guys what you're seeing, to show you how the courts work when a whole bunch of really important do-gooder prominent people, authorities, police, sheriffs, county attorneys, everybody come together to gang up on one homeless man. I want to show you how the system works so effectively and what I call abusive process and fraud on the courts to deliberately and intentionally steal this man's property with premeditated intent. Blessings to you folks. Email me at reverendcrystalcox at gmail.com if you have any questions. Bye for now.